It is said that the measure of good citizenship lies in the degree of unselfish service given to the community in which one lives. Hello, I'm Chad Miller, and welcome to the first program of the series People Link. During this series, we intend to recognize some incredible individuals who have made an outstanding contribution to their community. Both socially and in business, these people have set new standards for community involvement. And we intend to discover, firstly, the impact these people have had on their community, and secondly, what drives these people to attain such a noble degree of community spirit. Now, for the premier edition of People Link, we've chosen a person who could be described as the grandfather of Langley, Mr. Bill Poppy. It all began here for Bill Poppy in 1906. Bill's father, uh, D.W. Poppy Sr., was an immigrant homesteader who left Norwich, England in 1884. Following a succession of occupations, including a less than successful visit to the Klondike, D.W. Sr. finally settled on a homestead property in the Otter area here in Langley. He married a local girl, Miss Sarah Best, in 1905, and one year later, D.W. Poppy Jr., now known as Bill, arrived. Bill was born in this very room in 1906. Originally a log cabin, it now forms part of the home of Bill's younger brother, James, and sister, May. Now, this very stove has seen four generations of poppies and will quite likely see five, as Bill's firstborn son, Bill, and his firstborn son, also named Bill, now live on the family homestead. The Bill we're concerned with had a local education, attending Otter Elementary School until 1919. A successful student, he later went on to Langley High School, which was then in Langley Prairie, later to become Langley City. By the way, the distance from the school to the farm was a scant four-mile walk each way. Bill graduated from Langley High School in 1924, and immediately went to work on the family farm. Although life at this time was tough, and the farm obviously took up a lot of his time, the young Bill Poppy, now age 20, embarked on what was to be the first of many public-spirited acts. For a variety of reasons, it became necessary to move the church in the Milner district of Langley to a new location in Otter, some three miles away. Bill's father, D.W. Sr., generously donated a piece of land on the corner of Fraser Highway and 248th Street. And Bill, along with several other young men, undertook the moving project. Reverend Charles Walters of St. Albans Church. Their first involvement with the church is probably when the church was moved here and remounted upon the blocks that they built for it here at this corner which is between the Fraser Highway and the Poppy's Farm. And their involvement was to help to set it up. It took almost two years. The Milner Church was dismantled, numbered, and then stored through the winter in this barn on the Poppy Farm. Well, as spring approached and the weather improved, the daunting task of reconstruction began. Bill's wife, Helen. They started the next spring to put it back together and then they had to stop to get the crops in, and then between crops and haying, they did a bit more on it. And uh, then they quit for haying, and finally they got it all together. Is uh, the, the church that's there today, is it the same, more or less, as it was then? Uh, no, when it first came up there, it had, uh, is it tongue and groove siding on it, Mm -hmm. And you sat in the pew in the winter time, and the wind whistled through it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when they made the effort for to build the hall, 
enough money was raised that they were able to put uh, gyp rock on the inside and tile on the roof and put the um, uh, wall board around the end of it. And then when the hall was built, they got enough lumber to put some on the outside. And they uh, went from an old wood stove to an oil stove, and now we have gas in there. Mm. But the doors are the original doors, and they are cut from one piece of lumber. And they're all handmade. The Poppy family has remained heavily involved with St. Albans Church and still regularly attends Sunday services. Both Helen and Bill are responsible for several generous donations, which has led recently to the purchase of a new electronic organ. Many things within this church is the gift and donation that Bill and his family have donated to the church. No one knows of the great kindness that they have done because they don't broadcast it. In the 1930s, the Depression was in full swing. The Fraser Valley farming community weathered these years better than most. Relying heavily on the now dormant secondary industries, the local tradesmen found themselves not as self-sufficient as the farming community. Money was very scarce, naturally, and I think we survived the Depression by trading work, and uh, uh, which didn't require uh, cash, and uh, we, there was always something on a farm that had some value, which we sold, which was sold for the necessary cash. But, uh, however, uh, we were very fortunate in, in Langley, the Langley farmers of the community, uh, because we always had enough food. This was not the case in the cities. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it was uh, probably that background uh, of helping one another, I, I think, uh, was a good lesson that I'd learned earlier. Got you through the hard times. Was, was your farm completely self-sufficient? I mean, could you grow enough feed for the animals and then uh, have them feed you as well? Yeah, it was uh, Yeah, about, just about self-sufficient, with the exception of one or two years in the Depression that was uh, the income from the animals wasn't enough to quite make it. In the early 40s, Bill began what was to become one of the most important parts of his life. As the area emerged from the Depression, life on the farm gradually improved. Clearing the 100 acres continued, but not without its problems. The government of the day offered a subsidy to assist farmers in land clearing. But this subsidy was only available to farming associations as opposed to individual farmers. Well, Bill and his neighbor, Ben Greer, discovered this grant and undertook the formation of the Otter Farmers Institute so that local farmers could get their hands on some cheaper stumping powder. Bruno Giacomassi, a dairy farmer in Langley. Certainly the farming community benefited by Otter, uh, Otter Co-op. In them days it was called the Otter Institute. Uh, it made available all the things that we required on the farm, anywhere from uh, hardware uh, to feed and, and medication, and it was an excellent place to go and, and buy our supplies. Bill was to become involved with the co-op for over 40 years, and his roles included the duties of director, vice president, and finally president. Now, this plaque recognizes the many years of service that Bill gave to the Otter Farmers Institute, which is today known as the Otter Co-op. This is the Otter branch of the Alder Grove Credit Union. It was originally formed to financially assist local farmers. Bill Poppy and other concerned citizens felt a real need to ensure the existence of local farming, and in conjunction with the Otter Farmers Institute, they created the OFI Credit Union. We decided that we needed a credit union in the community, another service to the local people, and I think this was the back of our minds and of many of us, that uh, something that we could do to improve the lot of the, of the individuals in the community, then we were all for it. And uh, in those days, uh, credit unions had to have a sponsoring body. And the, uh, the uh, Otter Farmers Institute was a sponsoring body for the credit union. It later became the Alder Grove Credit Union, 
And this plaque was awarded to Bill for his 29 years of service as a member of the Board of Directors. The OFI also provided a great opportunity to enhance the social life of its members. The Otter Ladies Institute was established for the farmers' wives and daughters. Now, one of the functions of this ladies' group was to organize a library board. Book donations were sought, and Alder Grove's first library was open for business. And guess who volunteered to be its first librarian? Oh, I know how it happened. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the Women's Institute had um, uh, a book, uh, oh, what would you say, a, a, a number of books in the, uh, in the uh, Otter Hall, and they wanted somebody to look after it, and I volunteered uh, one on, sa on a Saturday night uh, for an hour to go down and keep track of the books and take, take, uh, take them in and loan them out. And um, then the uh, Fraser Valley Library, the Lending Library, come along, and that uh, they absorbed our books and, uh, and put a branch in. So I, I was the official librarian for the Otter in the first few years of the uh, Fraser Valley Lending Library. We haven't even gotten into all, some of the other things you were involved in. I was just wondering where you found all the time to do these things. Well, I don't know. I guess a lot of this work was um, uh, probably night work and being young and uh, could do without the lack of sleep and to keep out of mischief. I think this was my effort again to the, to the community. Bill's interest in politics developed quite naturally. His father was Reeve of Langley for over 18 years, and Bill, following in his father's footsteps, became an active member in the local Liberal Party. Well, I think he reacted favorably because he was a Liberal too. And so uh, naturally, uh, I don't think he would um, score me too hard on that one. He wasn't too upset about that. Uh, no. <laughs> so. Um, and, and, and again, back in those days, that we just had the two parties. Uh, so uh, it was necessary to stand up and be counted. And I always believed in standing up and be counted. And I think probably that was the reason I continued on probably the role that he started in the community. Though he never ran for federal or provincial office, he did become president of the local liberal association. Well, Bill quit the Liberal Party in 1943 and embarked upon a lengthy career in municipal government. I think I decided that probably uh, that I could serve a new role of uh, probably working for the uh, municipal government. And I was a firm believer that politics should not, positively not, be part of municipal government. So when I became involved in, uh, with municipal government, and naturally, I just let the Liberal, my uh, membership and my connection with the Liberal Party go. No, it didn't necessarily uh, mean that I wasn't favorable to them or anything, but I, I think in this role, one can't serve two masters. Mm -hmm. uh, one political master and the other, uh, uh, the local council, which is really your master. More of a service rather than a political yes, entity. Yes, right. Yeah. And any service, uh, probably of the old school, I, um, I don't believe in, in the politics should involve in it. I think many municipalities at the present time, some of their problems that they have where council members can't co uh, uh, cooperate, unfortunately it is the mean old poli politics at the bottom of the whole thing. Mm. Was it different in those early days? Did everyone get along that was on council? And uh, did the mayor always vote the same way as the councillors? I think it, uh, I always thought that my position as mayor I had to be a leader. And uh, I always believed in giving everyone, uh, council members and any delegation or any person who had a complaint, I always believed in giving him his day in court and you don't, don't have to necessarily agree with them, but I think you should listen to their, to their um, presentation, uh, right or wrong, and uh, then govern yourself accordingly after. Derek Doubleday, Langley's municipal clerk from 1953 to 1983. 
it was painfully obvious after the uh, Second World War that a lot of things had to be done in that municipality, and Bill was part of the council that started formulating the plan for those things to be done. For instance, he was on the council when the first high school was built, um, the one near the airport. And he was on council when a plan for replacing bridges that had fallen down during the Depression were to be rebuilt or replaced. And also the uh, building and the paving of roads. And the first paved roads in Langley were the roads on which the school buses actually traveled. That was the first priority. Uh, he was very concerned where roads went, uh, where schools went, how ditches were, were put in. Uh, Langley is today a great deal in part of what Bill probably contributed to it. Looking back, you were a member of council for 10 years. What do you feel was your greatest achievement uh, during those 10 years as a councillor? I think the uh, main achievement um, uh, was probably the, the fixing of the bridges. And uh, we uh, had a bunch of old wooden bridges that were in very, very bad state of repair. And um, there was one crew, a foreman, a truck, and three or four men and a load of planks. They went out every day to fix the bridges. So we... Um, our, our council of the day, we, we started in uh, uh, making, I think, three-year plans. The worst bridges to be fixed by permanent culverts and fills. And uh, at the end of probably the ten years, we had a lot of the worst ones done. And our objective, of course, was to uh, stop this uh, expenditure of uh, wages and planks and wasn't accomplishing anything. He recognized that in order to fulfill the requirements for the municipality to grow, that some expenditures had to be made, and um, the taxes was, was the property tax was the basis for the uh, money for paying for these expenses. But he was also a frugal individual and would uh, do his very best to make sure that uh, um, economies were effected wherever possible. While on council, Mayor Poppy continued his association with the Otter Farmers Institute. Amazingly, a situation arose in which a potential conflict of interest was implied. Derek Doubleday explains. Well, the situation there was that the municipality for years and years and years had uh, been purchasing dynamite from the uh, Otter Farmers Institute. It was the only place where you could buy it. And we did have to blast a lot of stumps in order to build roads. And uh, this had been going on for years. It had just become an automatic thing for the Public Works crew to go down and buy this stuff and use it. It became, uh, it came to Council's attention that uh, there might be a conflict of interest because uh, Bill Poppy and uh, two other members of Council, by the way, were uh, directors of the Otter Farmers Institute. And uh, so in order to... Um, avoid any further complication in that regard, the three resigned their seats and um, an election was called. There was no one to oppose the three and they were re-elected to council. But I think that was one of the minor details of uh, being in public life, uh, which... Uh, There's always a controversy of some sort. Yeah, uh, it has to be. If you don't do anything, there can't be a bloody controversy. <laughs> <laughs> In 1971, party politics entered the local civic arena. Bill Poppy, now 65, had held office for over 15 years and had privately decided to make this his last election. George Preston led a slate of three other candidates and Bill Poppy was defeated. Thus ending a term of office which to this day has not been surpassed. I haven't told very many people this, but that was my last... Uh this was going to be my last uh, shot at, at public office. I had planned to resign. And so uh, being defeated by George Preston uh, just uh, hastened my retirement by a couple of years. I think it uh, was good timing that uh, he left when he did. I'm not sure he agrees with that, but I think he was a very, very well respected and was the best person to be mayor at that time. And I think he handed on to the uh, future elected officials a good base to uh, run the community well. Looking back over those 27 years, do you, is there something that stands out as a major achievement in your mind? Yes. 
And in spite of what many people say, I think it's planning. Our, the basic plan that we had uh, set out for Langley with some improvements and uh, new uh, uh, bylaws and one thing or another, uh, the same basic plan is there. So we, the, the good foundation was set, and I'm very proud of my council and our planning people that uh, we provided as much as the, the, we did. In spite of what the opposition said in those days, they, they said there was a lack of planning, but, but then who, which comes first, the egg or the chicken? The now semi-retired Bill Poppy turned his expertise to the preservation of Langley's heritage. Langley has been a good municipality to me, and I've tried to be a good native son to Langley. And um, if there's anything, I, I'm interested in the local history, of course, and if anything that I can do to further the, the history and the background of this municipality, I'm very happy to do that. And I think, I think this is the reason I have um, active in the Heritage um, Advisory Committee. Um, unfortunately, human bodies wear out after a while. And, um, and then probably uh, it, I find it very interesting probably because I've got the years back. And uh, that's, that's the reason. He was associated with the Native Sons of B.C., a society whose goal was to preserve and designate historical sites throughout the province. One of the projects undertaken was the preservation of the one remaining original building at Fort Langley. The group also started the museum in Fort Langley, which today boasts an incredible display of Langley's past. In 1980, Bill's abundant knowledge of the local history made him the perfect candidate for an appointment to the Museum Advisory Board and the Langley Heritage Advisory Committee. Bob Harrower, former secretary of the committee. Bill was charged with the responsibility of forming a Heritage Advisory Committee. This was recommended by council that we should have such a committee. Bill did, I think, most of the homework in selecting the first half dozen members. And uh, very shortly after it was formed, I was asked to, be sec to join, and I became secretary. So my experience there for the six, seven years I was there, Bill was chairman, which he still is, and I was secretary throughout that period. Bill ran his meetings very openly. Everyone was encouraged to speak. In fact, that halfway through each meeting, when things started to go a bit quiet, Bill just went around the circle and said, what have you got to say? What have you got to say? And everyone was asked to uh, make a comment about either what had happened or what should happen in the upcoming future. So everyone had no excuse for not getting their wishes and points across. Les Williams, a member of the Langley Heritage Advisory Committee. If we get out of order or something like that or get yakking around, yeah, Bill is, is very quick saying, ah, okay, boys, that's it. Now we've got to get, get down to business. In 1987, Bill's extensive knowledge of the Langley Pioneers formed the cornerstone of an award-winning television program produced by Western Cable Systems Limited. The program was named Langley's Bygone Days, and Bill's involvement included writing, researching, and hosting. All of this at the dignified age of 81. We had a post office there from 1896 until about 1927. And there were no post offices in the area. And people come in for miles and miles around to get their mail once a week. And uh, many a good visit we had with friends and neighbors at once a week on, on the porch. The poppy farm and orchard is still very much as created by Bill and his father, D.W., and retains many of its original features. But as with uh, homestead farms of this size, it was to become no longer commercially viable as a farm. And if you look over my shoulder, you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> 1988 was to herald a new era for the poppy farm. The plow was to give way to the golf cart, and the bottom meadow was to become the 18th hole. 
Bill, not wishing to see the land subdivided, suggested the 100-acre farm be transformed into a public golf course. And the result is a unique blend of rustic beauty and a first-class recreational facility. Self-indulgent? No. Bill has never played a round of golf in his life and likely never will. Miraculously, though, Bill did find time for a few hobbies. Hunting, fishing, prospecting were all somehow squeezed into what must have been a very busy schedule. Lapidary, the study of stones, is also a popular pastime with Bill, and he can often be found grinding and polishing some unique example from his extensive collection. But what kind of a family man was Bill Poppy? How did he juggle politics, business, and family life? Everything had to be precision. Uh, there, if something went wrong in the barn, then I was late for a meeting. And um, it, by, by planning, uh, and, the, and when I say planning, it, it had to be a, a split decision. You couldn't, there was no waste of time. Every, every minute counted. Bill must have been an excellent um, time manager because um, as I say, he managed to fit everything in when uh, there didn't seem, from my perspective, there didn't seem to be any overlap at all. When he was uh, due to be at a meeting, he was always there. Was there ever a time that you wished the community wasn't there to interfere with what was going on in the family? Well, naturally. It would have been nice. But Bill enjoyed his life. He was raised on it, as I say, he went with his father. And he, he, Bill enjoys people. He doesn't, if he was put down and he couldn't talk to somebody for a whole day, I think he'd be lost. He likes to talk to people. He's got very fond of people. Which came first, community life or family life? Well, that's a rather a hard question to answer. Uh, I think, uh, your community life and your public life and your family life are all three items of importance. And uh, I, one tries to be loyal and keep up with everything. And uh, I don't think I neglected the family life too much. I must say I didn't see them too much. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was neglect. However, uh, their, their mother, uh, or the wife Helen, uh, the children's mother, I think she filled in there pretty good because she she carried on and kind of uh, uh, done things that I couldn't do for for the uh, children as a family. But we always managed to get away for a couple of weeks' holiday as a family, which I which paid off. There's little doubt that men the caliber of Bill Poppy are few and far between. Their commitment to the communities in which they live far surpasses any reasonable expectations. Whether it's from a dogged determination or a charitable desire to lend a helping hand, the Bill Poppies of this world should and will not go unnoticed. Now, we were honored to be in attendance at the 1990 Douglas Day celebrations to capture the most recent chapter in the life of D.W. Poppy, Jr. In recognition of your long-standing dedication to the improvement and quality of life in our community, the Township of Langley is proud to bestow the rights of freemen of the Township on D.W. Bill Poppy. Now, before we close this chapter in Bill Poppy's life, we thought it important to mention that during the research and development of this program, not one individual had any negative comments regarding Bill or his contribution to the community. I'm Chad Miller for PeopleLink. Thanks for watching. I think we all have a responsibility to the community, and if we all done our little share, it would be a much better place to live, and I, I try